kal halalium la yahawo bahasham shal yahawo shai bahasham raka kodash double honest to the apostles and elders of great millstone a salutation to the sincere akim that's pushing the truth of the holy bible in fear and in truth this is part two of who can understand the holy bible and in this edition it's men of israel only just to recap on part one real quick this is Sirach chapter 24 verse 1 wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people verse 7 and 8 with all these i sought rest in whose inheritance shall i abide so the creator of all things gave me a commandment and he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said let thy dwelling be in jacob and thy inheritance in israel all right this is proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding and the hebrew for that word wisdom is ha ka ma ha ka ma all right this is Exodus chapter 22 verse 29 thou shalt not delay to offer thy first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors the firstborn of thy son shalt thou give unto me so Yahweh is making a clear commandment that he wants the firstborn of his of their sons all right uh, throughout these scriptures Exodus chapter 13 verse 3 and verse 12 Exodus chapter 22 verse 29 Thou shalt not delay to offer thy first fruits of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy son thou shalt give unto me. Alright, so this is a, a commandment, a law that the Most High gave, and the children of Israel should offer their firstborn of thy sons. This is Proverbs chapter 8 verse 4 Unto you, O men, I call on my voices to the sons of men. So if you read verse 1, you will see that it's talking about wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 15 of Proverbs chapter 8. By me kings reign and princes do decree just, justice. So by the laws of the Most High, kings would reign. Through the wisdom and understanding of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash, kings reign and princes decree justice. Right, never say anything with queen or princesses. Verse 31 Rejoice in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights are with the sons of men. Same wisdom again. Ezekiel 34 31 And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your power, saith Yahweh. Power. Right, so the flock of the most high pasture are with men. So any doctrine outside of what these scriptures are saying notice that i don't have to go into them you know break them any further they're plain and to the point right and just to close off on the um, old testament isaiah 32 verses 1 to 2 behold a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment and a man shall be a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place and as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land so in the time of destruction these are parabolic um, statements describing destruction as wind water and a weary land and so forth and that a man shall be so all right because if you read the rest of isaiah 22 we we'll mention it rise up ye women at, that are at ease so let's go to the um, Apocrypha, the 14 missing books, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9. But wisdom is a gray hair unto men and an unspotted old life. And an unspotted life is old age. Unspotted means a life without sin, you know. Well, not sinning to the best of your ability, seeking repentance and so forth. Um, wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verses 12 to 14 wisdom is glorious and never faded yea she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her she prevented them that desire her in making herself known unto them 
whoso seeketh her early shall have no regret travail. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. So wisdom was waiting or is waiting at every man's doorstep, every man of Israel doorstep to be specific. To be used, to be sought after, to be loved and cherished, you know, because Scripture says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh words in his holy Bible, is the only wisdom in this world that will save anybody. Straight up. Alright, this is Sirach chapter 1, verses 14 to 16, or, or Ecclesiasticus. To fear Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and it is, and it was created with the fruitful in the womb. To fear Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. She hath built an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed. So that's talking about this, the lineage of this man who continue to be within the wisdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. To fear Yahweh is the fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits. So wisdom is referred to as a nurturing spirit. Because if you read um, Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon goes into how um, you know he make wisdom his spouse and so forth. is referred to as a nurturing spirit because it's comforting and is above everything. It's above the pleasures of women, the pleasures of money, the pleasures of drinking, the pleasures of, of mirth or partying as, as it as it, um as is mentioned in the scripture this is um now the new testament i'm just going to go to this account all right and this is to show that yahweh shai who the world can recall jesus taught men all right yes he would have corrected his sisters and so forth but the wisdom and knowledge and understanding can only be understood by men all right this is john chapter 4 verse 5 to 22 then he cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of the of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Yahweh therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahweh saith unto her, Give to me drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. This is verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest me of drink, which am a woman of Samaria of the Jews, which have no dealings with Samari Samaritans? All right? Then answered and said unto Yahweh answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Yahweh, and who it is that safe to be, give to me drink. So he tested her right there. So if you are wisdom and understanding, give me drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. All right? Then saith unto the woman, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence hast thou that living water. So he was being parabolic with her again. Art thou greater than, than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall, shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that is given, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst again and you see the friendship shall give him but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water spring up into everlasting life the woman said unto him sir give me this water that that i thirst not neither come hither to draw yahweh shall say unto her go call thy husband and come hither so he made it clear for her to go and call her husband. Alright, because one, you don't teach another man a wife. 
And two, she won't understand the deep parables of the Holy Scriptures that are intended for men. Verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband, Yahweh Shai said unto her, Thou hast said, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband, in that thou saidest truly. So Yahweh Bashem Yahushai skin her up and reveal her wickedness, because scripture said all wickedness but little to a woman. Alright? The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Yahweh shall say unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, the children of Israel. Alright? So he was just clearly differentiating, showing her that, well, coming back from the people. Alright, and I'm here to teach the men, the man that you're dealing with. This is John, chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father, which is, except the Father, which hath sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. So no man come, cannot come to the Father. Alright, and it specifically says no man except Yahweh draw him, which we're going to part three of the lesson. You can understand the Holy Bible, holy men of Israel only at this point, all right? Now there's some things we need to clear up. So what so what about those prophet those so called prophetesses or or female pastors out there? Well they are totally going against the word and these are the scriptures to prove so. This is First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse thirty-three, verse thirty-eight, thirty-three to thirty-eight. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Because remember, his flock is with the sons of men. All right. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. So they must be quiet. So they cannot go on the pulpit. Try to break down scriptures, all right? But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Obedience to what? Obedience to the husbands and obedience to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, of course. Verse 36 If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in church. What? Came the word of Yahweh out from you? Or came it unto you only? So this is talking to those pastors who believe that a woman have a right, or even a woman saying so, that they have a right. You know, son, the Corinthians gave the apostles a hard time with their wicked, perverting the doctrine. And if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him uh, let him acknowledge that the things that I write to you are the commandments of Yahweh. So this is a commandment. But here's what he says. But if a man, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. So this is the last two scriptures. This is First Timothy chapter two, verse eleven to fourteen. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So a woman should learn in silence with all subjection. All subjection. We can question certain things, but if it's a learned man, if it's a man that's devoted to how Bashan Yahushai will, I guess there won't be no need to question or like unnecessary questioning, so to speak, trying to justify wickedness and so forth. Or right? the questions could be along the line of wanting to expound more on the lesson that the husband would teach the wife. And brothers don't even go in much to to prophecies and so much with their with their wives. Our brothers teach their wife how to be according to the scriptures. Um, pray with the hair cup, uh, have their hair covered, um, not wear makeup, not wear pants, and so forth. Verse 12 of 1 Timothy chapter 2. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So women should not teach the scriptures because the most I did not call them to do so. All right? For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So remember his, his first calling, his first song. Um, 
you must first offer the son so you know says you were the first for adam was first formed then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in transgression all right and the last scripture revelation 21 verse 3 i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of yahweh is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and Yahweh himself shall be with them and be their power. So that's his close day. And with that, I hope that this lesson is very fine, sharp, and quick to the point. Shalom, Brakata. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That will honestly, apostles and elders of great millstone, a salutation to the sincere Akim, as pushing the truth of the Holy Bible in fear and in sincerity. Shalom.